but first on the agenda, just administrative matters. Um, you know, I had talked to Jennifer James over at Town Hall, and they're hoping to have all of the sign-offs on the and acknowledgements for the handbook submitted. Um, and I know some of us are on multiple committees, so you only need to sign that handbook once, and as long as they have it for one group, um, they'll just cross-reference that to any other committee assignments. So um, I'll do another uh, reach out to everybody um, to make sure those get in. Um, second item on the agenda are the minutes for uh, the two most recent um, full Housing and Economic Development Committee meetings, meaning not us going in front of the select board and the planning board, but our last two actual meetings. So I don't know if anybody had a chance to take a look at that. Um, if you're comfortable voting or amending as needed tonight, it's up to you. They look good to me. They look good to me. Okay, so if there are no uh, comments then, could I have a motion to... Yeah, I thought I spotted a typo in one, but I can't right. find it now. So I'll just uh, we'll retroactively correct it. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, so I have a motion to approve? Yes. Motion to approve with Bill's typo correction. <laughs> In anticipation of the typo correction. Okay, and again, um, this is for the minutes for our September and our October meetings. Okay. It, it's the word and, which was supposed to be the word and. Got it. Okay, I'll look for it. Okay, so motion made by Sean. Is there a second? Second. Yes, a second. Third. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Okay, next on the agenda, we have um, an update about the conversations we've been having with the University of Massachusetts. Again, I don't, um, Tony uh, wasn't able to make it tonight, but uh, Bill and I had a good meeting with um, Steve Schreiber and Henry uh, Ranke from their, I uh, can't remember their acronym, acronyms, but the, the LARP program, Landscape Architecture, um, and then the Regional Planning Group. Uh, they're definitely interested in moving forward. Um, subsequent to us having a meeting with them, um, and I think Bill at that meeting, they, the individuals present were very much leaning into taking a look at the Hampshire Mall site. Mm -hmm. Um, and they wanted to make sure that we emphasize that this is an exercise, right? So when they go through this process, it's not intended to work on a specific project for the town that we are then bringing forward to town meeting, right? right. Um, it's an exercise to engage the students, the professors, and really with the idea of um, in their mind, kind of, I think their language was opening people's eyes to the possibilities of what might be. Okay. Um, and again, I'm, I want to be really clear on that for anybody who's watching the meeting. So this isn't something that we're, you know, contracting with the university and they're going to come in and we're off and running, um, not having gotten any community input um, on a particular project. Uh, subsequent to us meeting with them, you know, see if Bill has anything he wants to add as well. Uh, Tony emailed back and said that they, he still is um, pretty confident about being able to get funding so that it wouldn't actually cost the town anything. He thinks it's something that the chancellors are going to want to support internally. Um, but he said, interestingly, when Henry, um, brought it to the wider audience of professors and staff, they're actually leaning more into the town center and wanting to do a visioning of sorts for the center of town. They think that that would actually be more interesting. Hmm. So we don't yet have a definitive project um, to, to come back, but they're very much, uh, looking at this being something that could start with the spring semester and would likely carry through the calendar year. Well, we, the proposals we had put together were a menu um, 
and part of it was a two-way street. <clears throat> These are things that the master plan had suggested would be worth looking at mostly. Um, and um, we, th we hoped it would get someone's attention, uh, someone's interest there. So apparently it worked. And yeah. uh, certainly a revisioning of the center is something that we have thought about for some time. So um, more to come on that. We're really in a bit of a holding pattern while the university uh, puts their heads together, their collective heads together, and then comes back with an actual proposal. Um, but they did indicate, again, they thought that this might be something they could get off the ground um, for the spring semester, which would be great. I guess the, oh, wow. the kids come back, um, Bill, I think they said February 1st is the start of the semester. Yeah, so, I think that's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, again, that's that's the only update on that well, tonight. Interestingly, uh, Matt Washkevitz, who is a Hopkins graduate and is now working for the city of uh, New York in its planning department, was in England. I don't. I guess it was uh, Wales uh, for his senior year, perhaps, or postgraduate year. And they wanted to do an exercise on, uh, they wanted their planning students to do an exercise. And he chose to take uh, up the issue of uh, the revitalization of the center and uh, maybe making a railroad street into a pedestrian mall. Mm -hmm. I'll have to dig that out. Yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot that that's exactly what he did. No. Okay. Um, and then next on the agenda, um, the forum, so the, the housing forum. So again, Justin sends his apologies. He had very much hoped to participate tonight, but I think um, likely something came up for him at work. Uh, so since our last meeting, uh, we did go to the select board and then the planning board. And in both cases, um, and you know, Mark, you know, well, you were there, um, but we received approval from both groups to proceed with the forum educating, and again, the emphasis on education, um, educating uh, people on housing and, and following the outline that um, Justin and Mark had put together. So I think there was um, overall support for that. And uh, the time frame that we had indicated was late January, February, I think, most likely at this point, probably we'd be looking at February. Um, and in Justin's email to me tonight, he said that, you know, he was just keen on for us to talk about next steps in terms of kind of filling that presentation out. And to him, logically, the next step would be to really nail down um, in the outline, if you re recall, uh, was really the idea would be to have the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission play some role here. And Bill, I think that you had some conversation with Ken or the rest of your planning board about that or? Um, we did touch on, well, actually we're, we were mainly talking about other things. So uh, we didn't really loop back to that part. It turned into a lengthy meeting. Yes, we had a public hearing as well as uh, the planning discussion. So, uh, uh, he, but we'll be meeting with Ken again uh, this coming Tuesday. Okay. Is that something you feel comfortable taking the lead on, talking to Ken? Since, I mean, really, you're the, your board's the point of contact for PBPC. Yeah, I can, I can talk to, I can talk to Ken, whether I take it up at the meeting or just separately. Well, I don't think it matters. Okay. It's probably of less interest to the rest of my board, so I think I'll just take it up with him directly. Okay. All right, and then I think um, the lion's share of the work is really kind of fleshing out the, the meat of the content for presentations. Um, I'm happy to talk to Ann McKenzie, and, I, and we had also talked about like the two chiefs, um, so the municipal department heads, 
I'm I'm happy to reach out to them and talk to them about what we're trying to accomplish and see if um, they're willing participants. Uh, I'm pretty sure Ann McKenzie will be. Um, and then Mark on the economic side, what do you think? Well, I, I was just going to say that they, I imagine they'll be very good at um, explaining the the added costs that might be associated. Um, and I just want to make sure that we also have some accounting of the added benefits in terms of, uh, you know, for any particular proposal, uh, if we could have some kind of uh, estimate on additions to the tax base, additions to the uh, to the residential valuations, and and you know, make sure that we we point that out that you know a- anything that we would do, there would be yeah, there would be costs on the services side, which are what people are going to be worried about, but then there's also going to be additions on the revenue side um mm-hmm. for these as well so i i guess just getting an estimate of that um in in a if you know i could i could work on that um maybe just pointed to the right person at town hall who would have that um probably yeah, the, I'm, assessor, the assessor yeah i think dan sedonic would be the logical point of contact All right. Yeah, and I'm just wondering too. I mean, not presupposing exactly what the additional housing would look like. Um, I'm wondering if maybe he can kind of give us a range of hypotheticals. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. A, a range of hypotheticals in terms of the different types of housing, but then just sort of on a per unit basis. So we're, okay. we don't know if we're talking about, you know, five units or, you know, that huge proposal down on maple street with all those uh all those units but if we had a per unit numbers then we could we could fill in mm-hmm. okay and then i'm wondering too i mean i would imagine um you know when we do the forum we're going to want to invite people who are participating in other committees right like so the dei um age dementia friendly, who've all been touching on housing and housing challenges. Um, and, I'm, and I'm thinking maybe when we have a draft, we might want to circulate it ahead of time to some of those groups to get additional feedback. Right. And Crystal, I'm kind of looking at you because I know you're- I know. Curious. I was waiting for you to finish. And, and that's an excellent idea. If you want, since I am part of the CDEI, you can draft it to me and provide it to me and I can bring it to my next meeting. Okay. We probably won't have any uh, working draft, I would imagine, till January, but- Okay. Well, mm-hmm. January. I apologize. Not December, January. Yep. Okay. Everything takes longer than you would think. <laughs> I, I know that's why I had to retract what I said. I, I can't imagine it being done in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is the a, a question I had uh, regarding the Econo Lodge. Um, okay, so Hadley learns. Um, you know, there's there's an email circulating saying it's going to be good for for families and children. However, from my understanding, these are just studios and one bedrooms that have had the go correct yes yeah with that's no, correct with no future expectation of families and children correct correct and bill keep me honest here but if i, I recall the presentations that were done by valley cdc regarding that property they said it was possible um, that you might find a, a single parent as an example yes but that it would not be considered family housing per se, like you might see elsewhere. Like Mm -hmm. green leaves and so forth, correct? Right. So the Valley CDC, I think, is focusing on two things here. They're trying to focus on uh, a slice of the community in need of housing assistance um, and what they have to work with on that property. So that's why they were saying that it would, they expected it would be mostly individuals, uh, maybe 
a single parent or two uh, or more. Um, but they're not thinking of this as family housing. This is uh, supposed to be more the uh, getting getting folks out of the woods and off the street into a place of their own. Right. Uh, so that's the, the segment that they're focusing on with regard to this property. Now, they have about five properties in Amherst that are all focused on different segments. So um, that's not to say they won't come back with something else elsewhere. But with what they have to work with at Econo Lodge, they're talking about 50 studio and one bedroom apartments. Okay. And do you have any idea when this, well, I know we still have a far way to go, but do you have any idea of when this project would uh, start to be built? The uh, they, they have an agreement right now with Craig stores. So in the article build and they talk about not until. I think late uh, year. 25 even. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But definitely for the 23, 24, winter season they are committed to craig stores so for the forum um i think the other thing that we need to do is is obviously be looking at dates and we were i, I believe we all agreed that the senior center is likely the best location because we want to do a hybrid okay um so, you know, again, just in the spirit of making sure we have adequate time to try to do the best job possible, um, would it make sense for me to look at um, dates with the senior center that are in the, like the, the latter part of February and stay away from school vacation week, I would imagine. Right, yeah, I'm away 17th to the 24th. 17th to the 24th? School vacation week. Yeah, okay. Thanks for letting me know when that is. You get to be of a certain age and it doesn't matter. You just then. forget. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, maybe that week after or you know, the next next two week window. Does that seem I'm like fine. a good time frame? Yeah, I'm fine. Last week in February, first week in March. Mm -hmm. Worked for me. Yeah. Okay. We're still um, doing it every uh, every third Thursday, correct? Um, our meetings, but we're talking about scheduling the forum, the oh, housing forum. I see. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, last week of February. Um, yeah, I'm going to approach the senior center to find out what dates are available. Okay. And then we'll have time to you know come back and and okay. see if that works for everybody because it needs to work obviously for anybody who's speaking too. Okay. And then, Bill, will you work on the, the section of the outline that has to do with the how the sausage is made relative to zoning? <laughs> yep, I can. I can talk okay. about that. Okay, and then I'll do the talking points for the, you know, basically how you know, um, just generally how the town government process works, and that again, that shouldn't be very long at all. Um, I did, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is I did have somebody from, I keep wanting to call it HAP, um, uh, Wayfinders. Wayfinders. Wayfinders, uh, they reached out because um, I had had some conversation previously and they were aware of the fact that, you know, a lot of municipalities are talking about these housing forms in some way. Um, so he did reach out via email this past week and asked if, there was anything that they could do to support this. And I'm I'm wondering, I mean, if it would probably be a really good idea to see what sort of data they have on whether it's Hampshire County in general or, or even Hadley specific, that would probably be very helpful to whether it's, you know, PV to supplement whatever PVPC has or mark what you're trying to do too. Is Wayfair, I'm not I'm not familiar with them. Wayfinders. Wayfinders. Mm -hmm. Wayfinders. Yep. They're uh, Springfield based. Um, 
they did a presentation to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission a few months ago. Um, so th they do have a lot of data. Um, you could get lost in the weeds pretty easily. Um, I love data. <laughs> well, I, I love data too, but I also am mindful that we want to um, try to cover an awful lot in the forum already. And no, I wasn't. I wasn't saying I was going to bring all that data to the forum, <laughs> <laughs> just for me personally. All right, but it would certainly be nice to have facts on hand, you know. And uh, I mean, I, it's an open meeting, so they're more than welcome to even if they're not playing a um, primary role in terms of speaking to have them available, I think is that's fine with me, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think yeah. any external source that deals with this sort of uh, production or has their hands into any of these aspects would be a great help for us. Okay. All right. I'll talk to John and see what um, I can get out of them as well. Okay, anything else about the forum? Okay, and if not, then the last thing I had on tonight's agenda was affordable housing. And I think, um, you know, Crystal actually touched on some of that. Bill, I'm gonna ask you, <laughs> I'm still kind of curious, have we ever gotten an updated figure yet from the quote unquote May due date to determine the percentage that we have currently? Um, I have not looked recently. Um, uh, I would think we probably have, but um, I'll, uh, I'll find out. I'll, uh, I'll send something around. Uh, okay. Yeah, what is it? Uh, I, I know 11 point something percent was being bandied about, but I don't know that that was ever official or if that was a back of the envelope somebody did. Um, well, hang on a sec. Let me just see if I can. Uh, it, it, there's one of those things that. Um, um, Everyone knew what the number was, but it hadn't been uh, officially released. Okay. Mm -hmm. Subsidized housing inventory. Um, um, Uh, it's trying to give me a uh, PDF, um, and so it doesn't have a disclaimer on the front page. This is as of June twenty ninth of this year. Uh, Um, so let me just see if I can share this and, uh, let's, let's mark it up. Split this screen. Yes. Um, okay, so let me do a screen share here.
So I had to manipulate this a little bit because they don't have headers on every page. But um, Hadley has 2,300 year-round units. Uh, 277 are on the uh, subsidized housing inventory. So that puts us at 11.93%. Okay. And the number we need to be over is? 10. 10. 10 right. Although I always caution people that 10 is not cast in stone. It is um, it is a regulatory guideline. Mm -hmm. So it could be changed to 15 at some point. And you see some of our friends in the area, Goshen has 2.26%, Granville has zero. Um, um hardwick has eight tenths of one percent um <laughs> gosnold's at zero gosnold's at zero <laughs> you're familiar with gosnold <laughs> it's one wow. of the island communities isn't it cutty hunk yes it's uh yeah. the very last of the elizabeth islands uh -huh. it, they say it has 37 uh winter residents but most people say there's really not that many there in the winter uh Conway, uh, for example, has uh, zero. Uh, Cummington has a few. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, part of it is that uh, we're, in a, we're in a place where people want to live. So we have a lot more. And some of the communities that have none are really not under any pressure to... Um, to develop more housing because no one wants to build it there. Right. They don't get people coming in to try to do 40 Bs there. They don't. No. <laughs> I guess no. <laughs> now, there was a question of what we're going to have that's going to roll off, right? And isn't that a concern? It is less of a concern than it was. Um, there is a case that uh, holds that if the reason you exist in a zoning district that would not otherwise support apartments is only because of 40B, you cannot transition to, you can't transition out of affordability and still function. So as long as we're still zoned for one dwelling per lot, the multiple dwellings that came in under 40B are uh, constrained in what they can do. So they have to maintain their portion of affordable. Yes. And we get to count all of them as affordable. We get to count for a rental, for rental, as long as, and I forget if it's 15 or 20% is affordable, 100% is counted as affordable. Right. Mm -hmm. And then now, um, now we'll have the Econo Lodge coming online as well. Yes, that'll add 50 units. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, I, I do want to, you know, caution everyone. This is this is a very uh, volatile situation, and there are a lot of competing interests here. So uh, <clears throat> uh, until a, a particular proposal is made and considered, that you know, we're there are a lot of what ifs. Yeah, yes, maybe we're fine this way, but we should also be planning for that way. So um, we are probably going to apply for a district, a DLTA, District and Local Technical Assistance Grant from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to uh, fund the development of a 40R smart growth zoning district. Um, we don't know what it's going to look like quite yet, both in area and in details, but that's why we're hiring a consultant to um, put something together. This is a grant that runs from um, January 1 of 24 through December 31st of 24. And so as a practical matter, a 40-hour zoning district might be on the 2025 annual town meeting. 
So it's not going to be a, um, a quick fix. Um, we initially approached it when the uh, Connell Lodge was rejected by the ZBA. Um, but as a practical matter, it's, it would not be um, anything to rely on to resolve that situation, which in turn has resolved itself in other ways. <clears throat> uh, we're happy to, the, the decision of the Housing Appeal Board is uh, it's a public document. So anyone who wants to look at it would be happy to send it around, but uh, not, not a lot to discuss really in this committee. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Bill, if you don't mind. Thank you. I, you do have a copy of it, Molly. And yeah, I can get it to everybody. You can just send it to everybody. Sure. Just dawned on me. I was like, well, I have it. So. <laughs> you probably have multiple copies, but I, I specifically remember sending you one. Yeah, yeah. And we had it from uh, the town administrator as well. So, okay. I'll get that out to um, the group just as an information item. Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, another, and I'm, I'm sorry, anything else on affordable housing? I actually wanted to jump back. I forgot to mention something on the administrative uh, item. I was just going to say on affordable housing, um, with that doubling of the, the, it, I think it was doubling of the money that the governor uh, put forward a month ago, um, and I'm not saying any particular proposal, but it might, might it be in our interest to... Uh, come up with a proposal for for uh, for some of those funds in in what way in terms of uh, either funding for one of our uh, studies that that we want to do um, or funding for a uh, uh, to to start uh, accumulating funds for maybe I, I again I, I'm not sure exactly what the proposal would be but to, to build a couple of houses um it's just that there's you know something like four billion dollars out there right that the the governor just approved um a doubling of that funding and it's specifically for uh the housing crisis so uh i'm just wondering if 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 it might be something that we want to look at again i don't know exactly what the plan would be but um but if we want to try to come up with a, a proposal that would would uh, fit with this committee. Um, something we might want to look at. Maybe it'll fall out of the forum. Um, so more yeah. of like a city for future reserve. Future reserve or, or to start on a, to start on a, a, a project. Um, maybe it's a, a, a zone. Uh, maybe it's a, a, uh, uh, the ability to to buy up some some houses that are uh you know need in need of repair and are, are being dilap are dilapidated um i don't know i don't know what it would be it's just uh, i'm seeing four billion dollars over there and the governor saying you know uh we have this housing crisis and wondering if we if we uh can be part of that yeah just wondering out loud if in fact the university is going to likely turn their kind of brain trust if you will to the town center um i wonder if i wonder if there might be an opportunity to somehow you tap into the funds relative to the route nine corridor or, or the hampshire mall property or whatever to get help with thinking about you know again thinking about long-term possibilities yeah maybe there could be a housing component to that yeah uh to the to the uh town center or the the route the whichever one they decide there at umass mm -hmm. bill do you think the pvpcs close to what types of um you know what types of asks they're they're accepting 
I I don't know, but we can fi certainly find out. Um, I imagine they're watching it more closely than uh, than we are. All right. And um, and certainly, <clears throat> we've learned that uh, regional uh, grants of e even if they are just three communities banding together to to do a, a mutual ask for individual structures in in separate communities, um, but the regional component's a good selling point. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll certainly ask Ken what um, if he knows what's up. Right, and especially because he's so familiar with the master plan. You know, obviously we did the housing production plan and the master plan update prior to that. But if there, to Mark's point, if there's a way to tap into some of this other money to kind of put us further down the road in terms of um, looking at the future on Route 9 that could include additional housing, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Good suggestion, Mark. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Anything else on affordable housing? Is there any uh -huh. update or information on the proposal for the apartments down by, um, what is it, the Nissan dealer? I've missed a couple of meetings, so I'm not sure. I think the last meeting I, I attended was the information regarding where across the street from where Nissan is, that lot mm -hmm. um, building apartments or something there. Yeah, that was the, the Parmer family was kind of poking at the possibility of doing something at the well, I think a lot of us still call it the Hadley Village Barn Shops, because uh, that's right. what it used to be known as. Yeah. Right. Um, so I do believe go? they've they've kind of backed off on that at least for the time being. And Bill, yeah. you may know more, but um, at the moment, I think they have their hands pretty full. If you notice, they did a tear down of the roadway. What was the roadway in property? Um, and that's going to be a Marriott Suites, I believe. Um, so the last conversation I had with them is that they had, you know, kind of back burner. Um, the other property temporarily at any rate. Can you, do you know anything different? That, Sean, that you agree? Yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, Keyshore told me. They were just okay. kind of putting it on the back burner until they get the, the new hotel situated. But it is a project they're interested in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so just on the administrative side, I had a resident reach out who does watch um, the committee meetings, and she was wondering, um, she she noticed that some of the other committees in town have pages on the town website. Uh, our committee has not requested one, but she was wondering if it might be a good place as various, um, well, first of all, we could certainly post our our agendas and minutes there, like other committees do, but also wondering if it might be a nice place for information um, because a lot of times we're forwarding links to articles, whether it's in the Boston Globe or, or uh, Wall Street Journal, like Tony Marulis just sent me one that was in the journal yesterday, uh, you know, having to do with whether it's repurposing dead malls or, or uh, challenges of, uh, municipalities have had putting housing in, you know, there, there've been a variety of articles on the topic. And she was just wondering if that might be a good place for us to think about putting a collection of those links that people could at their, um, at their will go in and, and, you know, kind of have a little resource area. I don't know what anybody thinks about that. I think that's a great idea. I, I was thinking yeah. that myself, how come we're not on, <laughs> The, the town page and do not have accessibility for the residents. Mm -hmm. And our meetings are open as well, right? I mean, we, mm -hmm. so there would be a, another place that we could post our link to our meeting. Yeah, I mean, they're all on um, Hadley Media right now, yeah. but we could certainly direct people there. Now with any, like anything, uh, challenges having it maintained, 
right? So I don't think this would be a heavy lift, though. I think it's just a matter of um, putting the request in. I mean, I know uh, Jennifer has her hands full right now, but if you're all amenable, I could put the request in to have the page. It may take her a little bit of time to get that up and running. Yes. I, I agree. I'm, I'm yeah. okay. Okay. All right. So sorry. I skipped over that in my notes here. I'd forgotten that when we were talking about this. Okay. It can I'll only help our notes. educational efforts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so right now our next meeting would be December 21st. So just doing a, a pulse check. Is that going to work for people or are we getting too close to the holidays? I'm, I mean, I think there's a lot going on that week with, you know, getting close to Christmas. I'm not opposed mm -hmm. to having it on that day, but I am willing to change it if anyone else has things that they have to do that week. What I can do is um, I can always just send out a, a poll and find out, you know, who's available. Um, you know, otherwise what we can do is, is also carve out time for everybody who's working on the content of the forum, you know, if, um, we need more time for that. And also there are people that are not here. Right, right. That's what I mean, you know, um, because Amy Fiden and Justin and Emma. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. The only thing I could think of that might come up is if, if the university does kind of land somewhere and they want our approval um, at that meeting, but other than that, I'm not sure what would be time sensitive. Do we want to leave it in place for now and then just communicate via email with everybody? Yeah. If we want okay. to move it, um, I can just create a standalone meeting anytime. Okay. Just have to be sure we're posted properly, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And if we want to move it, I would think we would probably be moving it to like, you know, the beginning of January. Um, so, okay, well, why don't I send a survey out and I'll also reach out to Tony Maroulis to see if he thinks that there is going to be any action needed. Okay, okay. so for now it's the 21st and then you're going to send out the poll to see if there's any changes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Does that work for everybody? Yep. I'm fine. Right. All right. Anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, motion to Second. adjourn. I want to tell everyone happy weekend and have a great holiday if for any reason we do not see each other before Christmas.